nothing they can work with our ancestors so hard and don't repeat with nothing. Hey, who we want say we want reparation. My name is Shelley Moorhead. I am simply a son of the Virgin Islands. Uh, I'm a native Virgin Islander. I was born and raised there. I am a descendant of ex-slaves. And today, I guess in my activism or professional capacity, I would be known as the leader of the Virgin Islands Reparations Movement. I'm also the president of the Caribbean Institute for a New Humanity. I'm the founder of the African Caribbean Reparations and Resettlement Alliance. And just last Friday, here in Denmark, uh, along with a number of other reputable uh, individuals, Danish citizens, we have founded the uh, CARIDA, which is the Danish Movement for Virgin Islands Reconciliation. Uh, it is not taught in our curriculum in the Virgin Islands, nor is it taught here in Denmark. Uh, so it is not an easy thing for individuals whether they be here in Denmark or the Virgin Islands, to discover that for more than 175 years uh, in the Danish West Indies, uh, that the uh, royal family and uh, some very rich Danish merchants, which at that time comprised of the state, uh, were responsible for the dehumanization of an entire people it is not easy to discover, whether in Denmark or in the Virgin Islands, that for 250 years, uh, Denmark colonized uh, the Danish West Indies, the now U.S. Virgin Islands, and in 1917 sold more than 100,000 people for $25 million in gold, uh, which in effect today uh, is one of the worst human rights violations in the history of humankind. Uh, you cannot violate or circumvent a people's inalienable human right to self-determination and there be no ill effect. And so today in the Virgin Islands, uh, we are experiencing a number of social ills, a number of socioeconomic and socio-political uh, problems uh, that stem directly from this illegal sale of people in 1917 and have roots in the 250 years of colonization and the 175 years of concurrent slavery uh, under the Danish institution. We want reparation. We fear we return to mama. I am not you want a reparation. Well, again, there are a number of diverse effects. Uh, and so it would be hard to you know, put them all in a capsule here today. Uh, but I will say that it was illegal to read and to write during the slavery era. And I think that uh, those, uh, the lack of those civil liberties have somehow been encoded in our DNA, where today, 50% uh, of our children drop out uh, of school before graduating. Uh, of that uh, number of, of the number of children that go to school, 40% are impoverished. So, you know, when you look at these statistics, and you connect them back to the history, and you see that there's uh, education today is still withhold, withheld from uh, the people of the Danish West Indies. It's a very, very uh, disturbing thing. As we go further, we will find that uh, one of the other legacies that stem directly from the sale of this people in 1917 is that we have no political status. Uh, we were not Danish citizens before the sale. We were not U.S. citizens directly after the sale. And it wasn't until the mid-1930s that U.S. citizenship was conferred upon this people. But beyond that, even to this day, it is not a citizenship that allows us to be fully incorporated. Less than 30% of the U.S. Constitution is applicable to Virgin Islanders, and we do not to this day 
have a constitution of our own. It has been uh, most recently rejected by the U.S. Congress, uh, citing uh, that it was unconstitutional to the U.S. Constitution. So these are the many effects uh, that stem to that 250-year uh, relationship or shared history uh, with the Danish state and crown. Never giving nothing uh, to the offsprings of the younger generation. Wicked, you know? well, we have to understand that in the political arena, it was made official by Peter von Scholten's proclamation. But for the people, it was made official by the stance that they took and by the strategies that they employed. And so we, un when we understand that the conch shell was blown, you know, on the eve and in the early hours of July 3rd in the morning, and it signaled the commencement of a very well orchestrated plan uh, that General Bodo rightfully uh, attributed the title general because you have to consider perhaps military strategy but war without conventional weapons you know they had to do everything that they could to secure their freedom and with the blowing of that conch shell and the commencement of the plan you found that in the early mornings of July 3rd 1848 thousands of slaves or enslaved Africans, all dressed in white, descended upon the fort in Frederickstead, Fort Frederick. Well, when the soldiers or the gendarmes uh, went to the arsenals to get the weapons and to position the cannons, and uh, when the messages went out uh, for the planters to come and to assist, in the militia, they quickly discovered that the many crocus bags and barrels that were supposed to be filled with gunpowder had been filled with sand, and that all the gunpowder had been dumped into the sea. We didn't have weapons, so we didn't have need for it. And so that made any kind of defense against the stance that my people had taken, it made it virtually impossible. So you tell me then in that environment where you have a fortress that is surrounded by perhaps more than 10,000 African enslaved people demanding their freedom, uh, when throughout the entire Danish West Indies the Africans who were enslaved perhaps outnumbered them more than 10 to 1. You tell me what, if you were in Peter von Scholten's shoes, what would you have done? I think the principle, the idea of reparations are not new to anybody. Uh, ever since there has been injury, there has been the need of repair. Whether it was human injury, whether it was uh, injury to society or institutionally, there has always been the understanding that amends uh, need to be made when there has been the impairment of humanity. Reparations in the African diaspora in the 21st century will accomplish the same, if not more, than what the civil rights movement of the 20th century accomplished for African Americans in the United States.